Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. Today what I'm going to be doing is recording a second video on waterless gardens and in this video I'm going to be uh, documenting a different process or a different design waterless garden that I will be uh, attempting to create. So the waterless garden is going to be um, a bit bigger in size too and um, I will be there will be other uses to this waterless garden such as uh, food scraps and uh, and also worms so uh, they're the additions uh, or the other parts or aspects to the garden however the same five principles that I uh, created my first waterless garden on I'm going to use the same here so just to recap those principles are uh, the water reservoir the overflow system the wicking system the soil and also the fifth being our own human emotions or emotions that are located and stored within our soul okay so as before I'm just going to show you all um, the materials that we'll be using for this waterless garden a 45 litre plastic container, a bag of gravel and pebbles, a bag of vegan organic uh, multi-purpose soil, some felt material, two drainage hose tubes, one tube is 1.5 metres in length and the other tube is 3.5 metres in length, some garden shelter netting, a plastic water tap with nut two cable ties a small bottle of silicone sealant a battery drill scissors a tape measure so the first principle is the water reservoir now to begin I'm going to use the uh, 3.5 meter outer hose pipe and what I'm going to do is just cut the ends of this off with this standing knife because we don't actually need them. So I'm just gonna quickly cut through it now. Okay, so we can throw that away. I'm just gonna create a few slits in the actual coils uh, just because when I was in Australia, uh, Pete Litton Hitchens actually had a bigger, I think it was called an ag pipe, he said, and it was quite thick and it already had slits in the actual coil itself. I couldn't actually find something similar, so I had to make do with finding something like this. I'm just gonna manually use the knife again and just create these slits all around uh, the pipe itself. Now the reason I'm actually doing this is because this pipe is actually gonna sit at the base of the uh, plastic container. When we put some slits in this tubing, it allows the water to pass through um, the tube itself and also creates more surface area uh, at, the, at the base of the, of the waterless garden itself so more water can actually be stored in the system. I'm just doing it uh, roughly, it is going to take a bit of time. It would have been better if I could find um, a pipe that already had slits. What I will do uh, is just put a link to the different types of material and equipment that I'm using in this video. So if you want to try do something similar yourself at home, um, you can easily just follow those links. Okay, so I've made the slits and I'll just quickly try and show them to the camera so you can kind of see what I've done. So if I just open uh, them up, you can kind of see um, that I've got slits or made slits in the tubing and that is like I said before to allow the water to pass through. The next part in creating the water reservoir is I'm going to cut uh, two square bits of shade cloth and attach them to the ends of the uh, of this tube that I've just uh, pierced those holes through. Unfortunately I could only get uh, shade cloth in a massive long roll uh, which isn't ideal but it's, it can easily be cut into size and what um, Pete mentioned to us was to uh, kind of be quite generous with, with the covering. So don't make it so it's really skimpy and just covers the ends of the tube. Try and make it a bit bigger. Don't actually need to cut uh, too much. 
uh, shade cloth. Knife's quite sharp as well, so it's important just to keep your concentration so you don't uh, cut yourself. And now what I'm gonna do is just fold the shade cloth over the end of the pipe, like so. And uh, I'm just gonna use a cable tie just to tighten or keep the cloth in place. Okay, so there's the cable tie. Just tighten it nice and tightly, as tight as you can go really. Once that's in, and the cable tie covers all parts of the cloth, then you can just snip the end of this cable tie. And then that's one end done. I'm just gonna do that on the other end. I probably uh, could have been a bit more generous uh, with the cloth. However, there is enough here just to cover the end and it's not that awkward. Now, I've got this 3.5 meter length pipe and also I've got the uh, ends covered with shade cloth and tied with a cable tie. Okay, so what I've got now is the three and a half meter length pipe with slits all along the whole length of it that I did with this knife. And on the end, I've attached uh, two bits of shea cloth and secured it with a cable tie. And that is just to keep gravel out of the tube itself once it's all in. Before I end up putting the pipe in the plastic container, I'm going to go ahead to the second principle, which is the overflow system and uh, create an a type of overflow uh, mechanism or a way that uh, we can drain the any excess water uh, that actually does get into the system out of the system if needs be. So what I've got here is I've got a battery drill. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is drill a hole in one end of the plastic container. I'm gonna drill it maybe about 20 centimeters or so from the base of the uh, container itself. Before I drill this, um, one thing that Pete mentioned was that we actually do want the gravel, uh, once we put it into the tub, to be higher than the overflow point. So um, when you, if you do choose to do this yourself, it is important to kind of plan ahead and, uh, and know exactly where you want to drill your hole before you do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just drill a hole around five centimeters up from the base of the container. Just need to mark a hole there. And then I'm just gonna drill the hole. What I thought about before drilling the hole was that it's probably best to kind of get a small hole through first so you kind of know the area where you're gonna be putting the, the tap or screwing the tap in. Uh, so as you can see here, the tap, uh, the diameter is quite it's quite a bit bigger than the hole that I've drilled. So what I'm going to do is just keep making the hole uh, bigger until the actual tap can fit through. Um, but obviously I've got to be careful not to drill it too much. Otherwise there'll be gaps and then there'll be leaks. And, uh, and then the actual waterless garden won't work at all. So it is important to do this uh, as precisely as possible. I've drilled my hole and I've put my tap in with the nut end I'm just going to screw that to the inside of the uh, of the tub itself just to secure and tighten the uh, tap itself okay so now that I've attached the nut to the inside of the tub I'm just going to uh, run a water test now and to see if there are any leaks in the system before I carry on it's important to make sure that there are no leaks before we start putting the gravel in and uh, in the felt and then the soil because if there are any leaks the whole system probably isn't going to work well at all just to ensure that the system is watertight is i've just added a layer of silicone around the outside of the uh, plastic container if you do end up using any silicone on the outside to uh, ensure that the system's watertight it is important to let the silicone dry before you actually uh, fill up the whole system with water. The second principle, the overflow system, has been um, 
created and put in place. Okay, so now what I've got here is the 3.5 meter tubing that I modified earlier on in the video with the uh, two ends covered with the shea cloth and fixed with cable tie. And I'm gonna just fold the tubing in the base of the container in a similar way that our intestines are kind of folded uh, inside of our bodies. So I'm just gonna quickly do that now because it is quite tricky uh, putting this in place without the whole thing kind of like folding out and things jumping out. Now I'm gonna add the gravel on top of that tubing. Okay, so I've added the gravel to the container and what I've done is just made sure that the gravel covers all the pipe that I first put into the container. One really important thing to just make sure that it's done correctly now, the gravel level should be higher than the hole that we drilled and where the tap is. If I remember correctly, the reason why I think that it's important to cover the um, overflow point uh, with the gravel is because the water is actually going to sit all in this area here. Okay, so now I'm going to move through to the third principle in creating the waterless garden, and that is the wicking principle. And what I've got here to act as uh, wicking material is some felt that I got from a garden center. And what the felt's going to do is it's going to basically absorb the water that is in this water reservoir into the felt itself to then provide hopefully water to the soil that will then sit on top of the felt. The actual process which allows the wicking system to work uh, is called uh, capillary action. And what that means is basically water molecules, uh, they have internal properties which mean that they actually like to stick together. So they almost form like a, they've got almost adhesive properties. So that when you get a bit of water wanting to go in a certain direction, or let's say in this example, water being absorbed into this material, all the water molecules are gonna to want to follow that bit of water, that first bit of uh, water molecule into the system. And, uh, and then that then allows the water to then travel up the uh, felt material and hopefully then supply the soil with the water it needs. And what I'm gonna do is just place it over the top like that making sure that the felt touches the uh, pebbles underneath it or the gravel. I've added the felt and I've tucked it into all the corners making sure that the felt uh, is in contact with the gravel underneath. And before we add the soil, what I'm gonna do is uh, just add another pipe in through the top. I've just cut a bit of the 1.5 meter tubing and it's important before you cut it to make sure that the tube length um, actually can touch the very bottom of the tube, or sorry, of the container. So when you put the tube in, um, try and dig a hole so that the tube can reach the bottom and then rest it up against the side and then cover it back over with the felt. And the reason why I've done that is so that when I need to put water into the system, I can just funnel some water through there and then it'll go directly down into the water reservoir and that's the way that the water's added. Also what I've done with the felt, the wicking uh, material, is I've kind of uh, put in a, quite a bit more than I had to just so that the material goes up the side of the container a little bit just to help with uh, trying to get more uh, more of the water from the reservoir and getting into as much contact with the actual soil that's now gonna sit in here. Now I'm on to the uh, fourth principle, which is the soil. As in my uh, first video on the mini waterless garden, I'm using the same soil. So I've got here organic, vegan, uh, multi-purpose soil. It is important if you are wanting to do this vegan to uh, make sure you check the, um, the ingredients or what's actually in the soil that you buy because a lot of soil does have animal products in there. Okay, I'm gonna just gently pour the soil uh, on top of the felt layer, so on top of the wicking system until, it, until the soil level reaches the very top of the uh, plastic container. I'm 
now I'm just evening the, the soil level out. And there you go, that's the fourth principle. The fifth principle is the, uh, the way our own emotions uh, may affect the growth of any plants in the waterless garden. So if we have any uh, emotional addictions or demands that we place uh, on the plants, if we have a certain plant that, let's say for example, is our favourite, um, and we you know, have a lot of investment in the plant growing really well and producing you know, really good uh, food or whatever, if that particular plant's not doing too well, but other plants that we uh, planted in the system are doing really well, then that's uh, a key uh, thing to kind of observe and um, reflect upon and, uh, and and feel about what you're actually putting out onto that plant too um, because they are live things and the way uh, Jesus has said is that um, all living things in our environment respond to our soul so it responds to what's coming out of our own souls towards it so um, so yeah that's a, another really cool thing that I'm going to be looking out for that's the next thing that we would do is uh, fill up the water. A good way to check uh, uh, for the water level because you know it's hard to see uh, where or how much water we have in the system at any one time is you can do it in two ways. One way is to um, open the tap that is that we put on the side of the container and if uh, water starts coming out that obviously then means that you know, the water level is higher than the tap. Another way we can uh, check the water is by using like a dipstick and just putting that down this side here where uh, this tube uh, comes out of the container from and uh, putting it down into there and then seeing or measuring uh, where the water comes up. What I'm also gonna do uh, for this waterless garden is I'm going to put some worms in. So I've already, um, Put an order in for some worms and uh, I'm going to uh, introduce them to the waterless garden. Following on from that I'm also going to use the waterless garden to uh, put in my food scraps so my organic food waste, my green waste such as uh, fruit and vegetable um, waste. Um, I do a lot of juicing so um, I, I always have a lot of green waste that I can put into this system. Hopefully the worms can then break that all down um, and actually keep uh, fertilizing the soil and make the soil really good for then growing plants in. I'll probably um, get that process up and running for a couple of weeks first just to make sure it's all going okay and uh, after that I'll then um, probably look at planting some uh, some plants in here. Got some worms and some worm food and what I'm going to do first is dig a a bit in the waterless garden, in the soil, put a bit of worm food in, just because it's all quite new, I want to give the worms the best possible chance of establishing themselves in the waterless garden. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to. Here are the worms. I've got 250 grams of worms here. I'm just going to gently put them in and spread them across the box. Really, all being well, they should start digging down into the soil. I've put some food scraps in already from uh, some raw juices that I've had over the last few days, just so that they've got a bit of food that they can uh, start working with and eating. The worms are in and we'll see how they go. What I'm also going to do is cover the, the top layer of the soil with, uh, with a mulch. So you can use sugarcane mulch or any kind of organic mulch. Um, you can also use newspaper scraps and also um, cardboard to, uh, to just layer over the top of the soil. Uh, but it is important if, uh, if we're using uh, cardboard, as I found out in Australia, to, uh, to actually remove uh, the shiny plastic that you sometimes get on cardboard because that uh, is actually quite um, dangerous to the worms. Ordered some organic uh, mulch. This is made, I believe, out of, uh, of coconut. And uh, what mulch does, it actually helps keep the moisture in the soil. And also organic mulch decomposes over time and it actually improves the fertility of soil as well. So I've just added the worms 
And now I'm going to put a layer of mulch just on top of the soil, just spread it over evenly. I'm just going to put maybe an inch thick layer of mulch on top of the soil. So that should keep everything nice and moist inside. The important thing um, that I need to consider as well is to make sure, bearing in mind the design of this uh, waterless garden, what type of plants will do well in it and what type won't. Uh, so, you know, it depends, you know, if, if you uh, put in a plant that's got really big roots, it probably won't do too well because um, this uh, tub isn't, you know, large really. Um, so some plants who, that do have a large root system probably won't do as well in here. Um, so it, it could be better to kind of keep things a bit simple in, in this one maybe for me at the moment. Pete put his waterless garden, uh, I believe on his veranda. So what I'm going to do is I've got a balcony here. So I'm going to uh, put, this, uh, put this waterless garden on the balcony, see how the plants grow. Uh, I will be documenting uh, the growth and the development of this waterless garden too. So I will in the future, uh, when hopefully I've got something to show, um, do another video uh, just to show uh, people who are interested how the garden's all working and whether the plants are growing well or not. Again, this is a totally new thing for me. I've only done one waterless garden before. Quite excited to see how, um, how this all works out and uh, whether I do get some plants growing. Hopefully I do. It is all an experiment. So, you know, we, we don't really have to all use the exact same material. Um, a lot of the material I used here uh, is different material um, in different parts than uh, what Pete used in Australia just because some of his, the parts he used I couldn't actually find here so I had to kind of improvise and use similar items not the same items such as the pipe for example of course the equipment that we use is obviously really important because it does help um, develop the whole thing and the creation process but the principles underpin the whole thing and the principles is what the whole thing works on so without the principles, none of this can happen. So that is the really important thing to remember. I don't know how often I'm gonna to need to water it. I will also document uh, in, in the follow-up video how often I have had to water the system. I'm not actually gonna be storing it in a place that will receive rainfall. So um, my balcony is covered. Finally, I'd just like to thank the guys in Australia uh, for um, teaching us all about the principles involved in creating a waterless garden. Uh, Jesus did a um, awesome um, presentation uh, with a number of us whilst we were there um, discussing the, the principles which underpin how this all works. I'd like to thank Pete Litton Hitchens for uh, demonstrating and doing his own presentation on waterless gardens, both this waterless garden that I've created here and the one I did previously were based off the presentation and demonstrations that Pete gave to us all. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to thank Pete a lot for that. But yeah, I'd like to just say thank you to everyone and I'll see you soon.